Hi everybody, Chris here from Truly Holistic. In this video, I want to talk about tensor rings, okay? The misconceptions about how we go about making tensor rings and where the energy comes from in regards to tensor rings. And talk about what is known as the cubit length or cubit measure of what makes the tensor ring a tensor ring and creating a tensor field. So, the common misconception is that you you just need wire, copper wire, and to twist it, okay, to any length you want to, and it will have an effect. Now, it necessarily may, it may have an effect, but it may create a dam a, a damaging effect to you. Now, the tensor ring, uh, and I'll just grab one here. Now, this is a, a full cubit activation cubit tensor ring, and this is a cubit length that. I got channeled to me and doused to me. So uh, this is not something I found on the internet or found through a resource site in regards to how to make tensor rings. I doused and and and, and my my high self uh, communicated through dowsing technique the measurement size that was required to make it. But what you'll notice here is it's twisted twisted copper or twisted wire. This is made out of copper. And one thing is the whole thing about twisted wires, it cre it's creating a vortex, right? Because that's what a vortex is. Vortex is when uh, a bit exactly the same how the strands of the DNA twist around uh, like a vortex, right? And one thing I will say about a vortex is that a vortex is a, a geometry that you'll see everywhere. You know, when you look at a water running uh, in nature in regards to where it's naturally flowing, it's actually not just moving like that, it's actually vortexing. And this vortex creates a field that keeps that water clean, okay, and actually keeps it vital. You'll notice that water that when it does not have flow, it gets dirty and smelly because it doesn't have that energy connection, that vortexing flow to it, that one, to keep it clean, and two, to keep it vital. Also, if you're you're a fan of fires or open fires or being around a fire, you'll notice that the flames don't just go up, they actually vortex up. They vortex up. So keep a really close eye on these things. You'll see it everywhere. It's everywhere. And that's one thing that I love about geometry is geometry is structure, and structure is formation, and that's where we get the word in formation from. In formation. Everything's bound to structure, everything's bound to geometry, and this is a, a, a very important geometry, because this geometry as well is very much in line and connected with uh, wormholes, stargates, portals, gateways, all these sorts of things in regards to a vortex. Okay, so, um, so coming back to the misconception about the rings is, is quite often that, okay, we can just twist wire to whatever length we want to and it'll have an effect. Now, the key to what makes these work is what we call a cubit measure or cubit length. And this is not the measure of the wire before it's twisted, but after the wire has been twisted. So you go ahead and you get a wire, and I don't know if I've got a wire here on me right now, but and you twist that wire, okay? And you usually use a drill to, to, to twist that wire. And then you measure that length out. You can, you're going to look for a specific sacred measure. And Slim Sperling uh, brought this knowledge to the general public in the early 90s. And one of his first um, cubit measures was the sacred royal, uh, royal sacred cubit measure, um, which came from the Great Pyramids. And another one that came a little bit later in regards to another gentleman. Um, the name is kind of escaping me at this point. But it's called the lost cubit measure, and uh, you've got to directly find that measurement to the millimeter, and because if it's slightly out, it will not work. Now, why that's that way, and why it has to be to a specific cubit measure or length, is because those energies are coming from a higher density, higher dimensional, higher realm. Okay, and that energy is in a is, is just energy, and it's in a form that our, our eyes can't perceive really what it is, because our eyes within this reality are dictated by a 3D 
geometry or 3D form. And so to channel that energy, it has to be anchored into something that we can physically see into a 3D form. And lo and behold, this is what it is, a tensor ring. Now, what makes the tensor field is not necessarily the copper, okay? The way it's twisted, yes, but the, 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 the vortex or the, the tensor field is actually in here, in the space where there's nothing, in the ring, okay? For example, if we anchored that energy in from another realm, another dimension, another density, we'd have nothing physical to know that it's there, okay? But if we have a ring like that, we know that it's in here, okay? Especially, obviously, by that cubit measure. This is to a specific cubit measure, okay? And it creates a column of light, okay? Through the ring, okay? And as long as it doesn't go outwards outside of that ring, but from, from this way going in and that way going that way, so many kilometers, there is this light coming through it, which we can measure through a, 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 a frequency. Now, obviously, I'm a Dowser Heritry Holistic, and, and, and I'll get information on what this particular qubit measure will be able to achieve. Okay, And we call this an activation qubit because it's all focused about activating components of us that have been dormant for a very long time. And, and one thing about uh, us is that we have all the answers. Okay, we all have we have, we have the intent and manifestation capability to do anything. But we certain parts of it were being tricked to uh, and and kind of been a lot of us sabotage that intention and manifestation capability we have because we never got a instruction booklet when we came into this life of how we use it and how important it is. Now, that intent power is able to use these devices, these qubit measures, to facilitate an energy through, okay? And when we activate more components of ourselves, then our own intent and manifestation capabilities can become even more powerful because we become more aware, we become more conscious, more components of us then can then be utilized. And that is the reason of this particular qubit measure. Now, so you, when you're making a tensor ring, you have to be precise to the millimeter in regards to that length, that qubit length. It's not just about twisting wire, and it's not just all about copper. Okay, the copper seems to be in regards to tensor rings, again, as I say, that anchoring metal for that frequency or that energy to come through. Um, but hey, if you're dowsing and you're finding new qubit measurements, measurements that you're finding has an effect, it could be another metal, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be copper. But you need to know some information or some intuition or some knowledge of knowing that metal is what needs to be anchor or the anchor for that energy to come through it. Okay, so what I'm going to go through as well is the same qubit measure. So we're calling this the activation qubit, but you know, it could be the raw sacred qubit to that measure, or the galactic qubit, or the, um, the lost qubit. Yeah, you know, these are a, a number of different qubits that you can use. So that is the full qubit measure. Okay, that one there. Okay. Now, we've got this one, too, here, which is a lot smaller. Now, that is an eighth qubit measure of this activation qubit, okay? So, you kind of go by, it uh, doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be for every qubit measure. You have to um, either douse to find out or, you know, through some Sperling or um, Brian Besco or uh, another uh, person that is um, is really a pioneer in regards to tensor technology or light life tools, which comes from some spelling. Um, they may have a book or some guidance and and what um, qubit measures in regards to ratio sizes. So that's a full qubit. Now that's an eighth qubit. So, for example, you get you know the full length of that qubit and then you divide that by eight, right? And then you come up with that measurement. Okay, and 
Now that that one there and that one there have the same capabilities of what they do. Okay, so the frequency, the energy that is being channeled or anchored through this ring is the same with that ring to that ring. Now, obviously, the difference is that as it's a ring, the energy, the light is channeled through the ring, okay, into the space where you cannot see just within that circumference compared to that circumference, okay? So, for example, if you're wanting to work on a general area, area you say you, you had headaches, well, you'd want a ring, ideally, that could go over the head like that, right? And you, you'd channel up through it. Okay, to a certain area where you feel a bit of energy that's kind of stuck until that energy lifts off and moves removed, or you just want to light like that, and that field is just going to go through that area working on, you know, if you've got earache, toothache, whatever. You know, again, if you can couple with dowsing and find out specifically what the problem is, then obviously these tools will work a lot better for you because you can be more precise. Obviously, you can go to a measure like this or even another measure smaller than this. So for a um, uh, yeah, this is an eighth cubit. You could go to an even smaller, a sixteenth cubit, and if that was the size that you could wear that as a ring uh, and have that on your finger. Um, now, a, little, a measurement like this is great to have in your pocket or as a pendant. So you, when you wear this as a pendant, then you've got that within your field because remember you've got your aura or your bioenergetic field that comes out at four feet away from what we call the physical body or the encoded body. Another way you can do this is place this on, uh, if you're drinking a bottle of beer or a bottle of a drink of some sort, you can place that over top of it and that's activating or creating a field that's more compatible within this, that beverage that you're drinking. And I do um, muscle testing with people all the time and you know, you'll get somebody that they have a sip of their beer and you do the muscle test and they fall over easy, but then all of a sudden you place this over top of um, the bowl neck and then you get them to, just for a few seconds, get them to sip that drink again and you do a muscle test and they're solid as a rock because we've, we've structured that, that beverage and therefore when they take that beverage into this body, it becomes structured as well. Um, now, so that's a full cubit, okay? Now what we're going to show you now is a double cubit, okay? So here we go, that's double the size. Now, a cubit length, well, this is the activation cubit, and we make it this size because all of a sudden that can encompass the whole body, okay? So you can stand, put your whole body within that field, okay? So that's a column of light that's created, okay? And again, you have the full cubit length, and you just double that cubit length, again to the millimeter, and then you, f you have that cubit length, that cubit measure which is exactly the same cubit measure, which we call the activation cubit, to that one, to that one, to that one. Okay, and even including this one, which is, I use as a bracelet. And this is a, this is a quarter cubit. Okay, so as you can see there, full cubit, quarter cubit. Okay, and then we've got an eighth cubit. Okay, so and they all channel that same or anchor that same energy through. Okay, so I thought I'd do that, do this video about this because there is a lot of I get a lot of comments from people that just think they can go ahead and twist wire or the energies in the copper itself or the wire. But really, what this is creating is creating a field inside the area where there's nothing. Okay, okay, because we need an anchor of this energy through. And one also one thing I will also mention. Uh, and Brian Besco does mention this uh, in a really uh, 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 great way, is that when you have this tool in your hands, okay, this, this tool becomes a part of you, your higher selves and your source lineage or your soul has that as well, okay? So this is where the word, word quantum entanglement comes from, is you're all connected, you're in different realities, but you're all connected Okay, and when you have this tool in your position here, your higher self, your source has it as well. And that's a pretty cool thing. Okay, and I thought I'd finish the video with that. Um, if you've got any questions regarding tensorings, 
uh, lengths of tensor measurements where you want to find them and you want to start making them. I also make them here and I sell them here at trulyholistic.net if you want to go to my website in regards to looking at products like these. Um, I hope you've uh, learned something from this video and enjoyed it and uh, I'll be seeing you very soon in regards to an updates video. So thank you for watching and thank you for supporting my channel.